Hey, good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday to you. Uh, first of November. Uh, it's officially time for people to start playing Christmas music. I heard Christmas music on the radio this morning, and I thought it's a little too early still for that. Um, anyway, hopefully you guys are having a good day. Off to a good start. I pray that the Lord would bless you and uh, just... Uh, lead you today. And so we're going to jump into the scripture. We have started uh, our exploration of the book of Proverbs. We started that yesterday. Uh, Solomon's words of wisdom to us. Um, we know that Solomon was wise. And the reason he was wise is because God blessed him with that wisdom. Uh, there was a discussion that he had with Solomon and Solomon requested to be wise in his understanding and to impart that um, and so he did. So he gave us the book of Proverbs. God led him to write the book of Proverbs. And so Proverbs is this just uh, collection of wisdom uh, sayings and uh, biblical, uh, biblical truth in practical forms, right? It hits on these things that, that are things we do every day and that we wrestle with every day, that we are confronted with all the time. And um, so I think it's interesting um, that Solomon in chapter one starts off with this uh, kind of like laying down this practical advice on how to go about living. And he gives a warning to begin with. Um, so in Proverbs chapter one in verse eight, we, we read kind of the reason why uh, Solomon wrote this earlier yesterday in, in chapter chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. Today I want to just pick up and read in verse 8, and I'm going to read a couple of verses here. First thing he says here, he says, Listen, my son, to your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. They are a garland to grace your head and a chain to adorn your neck. This idea that you, you hang this around you, it becomes part of who you are. It's decorative around your neck and around your head. And he's talking about the teaching of our parents. So he's talking about a father who instructs his children, um, a, a mother who teaches her children the ways of God. Um, such a valuable thing. He says, he says, make sure that you don't forsake that, that you remember that teaching, that you don't get too big for your britches, right? You've ever heard that phrase, that you don't think too highly of yourself. You don't get to a point where you think that I, I know better than these other people. I don't need anybody's help. I don't need anyone's instruction. I'll figure out my way better than their way. Um, there's always a danger of that. And so let's not forget the instruction of our parents as they give us godly advice and godly character building. Uh, this matches, I think, uh, obviously the rest of Scripture, Deuteronomy 6, where uh, God's plea to parents in Deuteronomy 6 was to, uh, to obey the laws that he commanded. And then he says, I want you to impress them on your children, to teach them, uh, to make sure they're learned in these things. And so I think there's a dual function here in knowing this. One is as an, as an individual, we should retain that knowledge and remember those practical and uh, those practical things and principles that our parents taught us that were biblically based. I think the other concept we need to consider there is that if you're a parent, right? If you're responsible for a young person, um, or if you're a teacher, or if you're a mentor, any kind, you're dealing with kids, uh, you have a huge responsibility to bring those kids up to know the truth. Uh, to speak to them clearly, to educate them, but also to model that for them. That's so important. Verse 10, he goes on, he says, My son, if sinful men entice you, do not give in to them. If they say, come along with us, let's lie in wait for innocent blood. Let's ambush some harmless soul. Let's swallow them alive like the grave and whole, like those who go down to the pit. We will get all sorts of valuable things and fill our houses with plunder. Plunder, Cast lots with us. We will share all the loot. So here's an interesting thing here that is being taught by uh, Solomon. Solomon says here in that verse 10, So my son, if sinful men entice you, that is the same word that James uses in the New Testament. So James in the New Testament says that, uh, 
that we have to be careful when we are enticed, when we are lured away. Actually, that word entice literally was a fishing term. We've talked about that before. Uh, it's a fishing term where the idea is when you go fishing, especially if you're going to use artificial lures. So as, um, as a bass fisherman, right, we do bass fishing tournaments here at Lake Eustis. And when we go fishing, we use all artificial bait. So you're talking about plastic worms, um, uh, rattle traps, crank baits, spinner baits, top water, top water frogs. I mean, all these baits and all you're doing when you're throwing an artificial lure is you are trying to entice that fish into biting it. You're trying to trick and deceive that fish into thinking this is good for you, it's a good meal for you. That's exactly what's going on here, that Satan uses sinful people who are warped in sin and sinful behavior to entice us. And they, they entice us by saying, come on and, and let's, let's join, let's have some fun together. Let's go do some things that, um, that, that are questionable, right? But they paint a picture like it's a good thing, right? Over there in verse 13, it says, if we do this, if we take advantage of these people, we'll get all kind of valuable things and we'll fill our houses with plunder, right? We got, there's, there's some perks to doing these things. We're gonna get rich on this. We're gonna have all that we need. Solomon here, just like James in the New Testament, is saying, don't get enticed. Don't get deceived by them. Recognize that what they're asking you to do is not in alignment with the Word of God. So important. Verse 15, he says this, My son, do not go along with them. Do not set foot on their path. For their feet rush into evil. They are swift to shed blood. Just do not go down this road. Again, I think it's so amazing how all of Scripture ties together. So, Solomon here is saying, don't even go down that road with them. Don't even, don't even put your foot on the same path that they're going in. They rush into evil. They have all kind of evil plots. And just do not go down that road. It was um, Paul who wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. He says that uh, bad company corrupts good morals. So you can have the best of intentions. But if you begin to associate with people that run in sinful circles, it's going to be really difficult to maintain your purity and your integrity because of the influence of others. Paul says it in 1 Corinthians, it says, bad company, sinful company, sinful uh, friends and, and people who do these things that are not honoring God, they will corrupt your good morals. You might think you're good, you might think you're strong, you might think you're pure, um, you think you think you got great values and great deep convictions, but it's easy to compromise those when you surround yourself with ungodly companions. And so this whole first chapter is like, just do not do that. Do just make sure you avoid all that. Then at the end of this chapter, Solomon gives a warning to those people who live in sin, who try to corrupt other people and take advantage of other people. There's a warning here that says at some point you've crossed a line where it's too late and you will not be able to be, um, you, you, like when the end comes, when final judgment comes, it's too late. This is an interesting take on this. We've got to be careful here because what we've recognized in the scripture is that there comes a point where we've crossed over, we've crossed over and when the time comes for judgment, we can't then say, oh, I didn't mean to do those things, Lord, right? He says, and when that day comes, they will eat the fruit of their ways and be filled with the fruit of their, of their, of their schemes that they played. Um, and we don't want to get caught up in that. We don't want to be caught up in a, in a lifestyle of morality, a, a lifestyle of evil schemes and plotting, deceitfulness. We don't want to be involved in that. So we take the heed of Solomon. He says, don't even set foot on that path, right? If you've been invited to do something with someone and you question like the integrity of that, you question the validity of it, I mean, that's the Holy Spirit saying, let's pump the brakes a little bit. You don't need to go down that road. So don't even open the door for that stuff. Paul said, or James, James says it, Paul says it, and Solomon all say it. Let's avoid those those friendships and relationships that will lead us down a path of destruction. Let's avoid those. 
uh, in any way we can. So let's pray about that today. God, thank you for being a God that leads us and instructs us and shapes us. And I pray, God, that this morning as we think about these things, I pray that we would impress your word on our heart, uh, that we would guard our relationships and guard our influences. And God, we put people around us that would hold us accountable and encourage us and edify us. Uh, we recognize, God, we li have to live in this world. We have to have influence over sinful people, and we want to interact with them. But God, help us to be careful of how we delegate our time with that. Um, help, help us, God, put safeguards in place so that we would not give in to the enticement of sinful ways. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, everybody. Hope you have a good afternoon. Thanks for being with us today. We uh, look forward to seeing you tomorrow, and I'll see you 9 a.m. in the morning. All right, God bless.